Why are you sleeping down here? So in my bed for more equipment. How much equipment do you need? I need it all. So when you're starting your video production company, you're probably thinking of just like the most important thing to get going. Equipment. It's important. It's not the most important thing. But, I mean, what kind of production company are you going to be is really, I think, where you need to start at. Like, do, are you going to just make movies, short films, weddings, commercials? All of them? All of the above? Oh, no, no, maybe not. But no. you also have to think about what people are consuming and where they might be consuming it because there is a lot of content being produced and there are also a lot of streaming services and just places to go. So these are a few of the mistakes we made when starting our production company. You know, we were in our early 20s when we kicked things off for the production company and yep, we, man, we just did not have a cohesive business strategy. Let's talk about the mail. Can we talk about the mail, please, Mac? I'm dying to talk about the mail with you all day. No. When we went into this. I mean, I think we were just excited. So, of course, I went off and bought all this equipment. I bought cameras, I bought, you know, lights, I bought editing stuff. And there you go. Thank you, sir. There you go. There you go. There you go. With no real strategy of how to, oh, how are we gonna pay this off? So we took on a lot, a lot of debt, yeah. but we also didn't think about, oh, what are we gonna do in terms of splitting our time? Like, where are we putting our energy into? So with what we wanted to do with film, yeah. we really couldn't put all that in because now we had to pay stuff off. So we were like, well, now we gotta take on weddings and commercials and yeah. just all that stuff. I'm trying to think of even how we got into weddings. Like, it wasn't as if we even started the company to go make weddings, but it ended up being a thing that we did split our time on. I think it was word of mouth people saying, like, oh, you have equipment, can you do a wedding? We're oh, like, yeah. Sure. They just assume. Yeah, so we're like, yeah. uh, we need to pay off bills, so yeah, we'll do a wedding. Yeah. And yeah. slowly now we've done it for yeah, you know, so many years. But let's preface this saying that we do enjoy filming weddings. Like, it's actually, like, a lot of fun to film weddings yeah. and, and, and edit them and everything, but... Yeah. And it's good, I mean, to learn, like, what you want to do and where you actually should put your time and value of kind of, like... Yeah, so. Yeah, but you know, from there we've learned a lot. So I think now we can kind of get into what we do now versus uh, what we did before. Yeah, who are we now? So some of the things we've learned while creating an independent film company a long time ago, from what it feels like, uh, one big item I've learned is utilize the equipment that you have around you. Whether you have your phone, as most people do now, um, friends that maybe have the equipment, cameras, audio. Help me help you. Rental companies, big, big saving mm -hmm. grace in terms of not having to invest all the money, but using something that's of a high quality. Yeah, so, so, but now if you're push come to shove and you've got a little bit of money to invest in something, more video, more audio. Oh man, tough choice, but I, I think when you think about more people are forgiving on low quality of your video, but less forgiving on audio. Yeah. So if you are going to have to, I mean, like you can make stuff look okay, but they will not forgive if it's horrible audio and they can't make out what is being said. So yeah. audio first, I think. Yeah. And that makes sense. So, but you know, the reason I ask is because, you know, Greg's always looking at equipment. And it's just his thing. Yeah. But, uh, you know, as I've tried to grow into a, a more of a producer role, that's what kind of just drives me. It's important for us to kind of like talk out what equipment we have to get and then kind of figure out how we're going to pay for it. Um, so when it comes to finance, especially with equipment, you know, have people help you with your taxes, especially because like your equipment needs to be on some kind of depreciation schedule. I'm not going to go too, too far into that, but someone that's a tax professional can help you with that. Also, all the like small business organizations that are out here, really great resources mm -hmm. in regards to how you're going to build business plans for stuff, how you're going to market, how you're going to do all kinds of strategies. So those are things that we try to utilize more now. Yeah. And, and we've taken yeah. a lot of time to read a lot of books to help us expand our knowledge about what to do. I have many leather bound books, YouTube videos, resources yeah. and stuff. And now, like Anthony said, with communication. We do kind of put together strategies if I say, oh, I think we're going to need this piece of equipment. How are we going to pay this off? Or if we have a video or something we are getting ready to produce, I say, we may need this. Yeah. So it's a lot of communication and his understanding of finances producing degree, finances yeah. and my creative content, kind of all that good stuff. Trial and error. Gosh, is it. But uh, you know what? I think at the end, it's, you know, utilize the resources you have. You're never going to have all the time, money, resources, equipment that you ever want but i think the best thing to do is invest in yourself and and what you think is going to be best for you to grow